So one of the most important aspects of road biking or mountain biking is your helmet, your brain bucket. And we're gonna tell you why. So let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you are watching another exciting episode of Toolbox Topic. I'm joined by, once again <laughs> by my co-host Brandon Van Leuven. Brandon, how the hell are you? I'm doing well. Nice. <laughs> We're coming to you once again from Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona, because it's where the cool kids hang out and me. And you hear all that stuttering and everything, huh? I was wearing my helmet. Imagine what it would have been <laughs> had I not been wearing my helmet. Joking, guys, but I had had some fucked up head trauma, so. Um, Yes, Brandon, we're going to talk about helmets, why they're, in my opinion, probably the most important piece of gear on your road biking or mountain biking experience, on a bike in general. Agreed. Um, if you're going to forget something, your gloves, your freaking knee pads because you're doing downhill, whatever case, I, the helmet. If people show up without a helmet, I refuse to ride with them. That's how seriously well, I take it. So, good. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about the differences from the old styrofoam specialized helmets we used to wear with just the little mm -hmm. cloth on it. Oh, yeah. To how that technology has changed and where we're at today and and why it's so critical it. to wear these apparatuses and guys we've done this before about 18 months ago <laughs> we know you're not going to go back in the archive and it's that time of the year you know just to remind everybody to be safe once again so yeah, nice done so we're still going to find a lot of foam right in these helmets it's still a staple of protecting our heads because mm -hmm. the foam what that foam does is it absorbs the impact it actually crumbles around our head yeah and instead of our skull hitting the ground and then taking all the impact right the foam is what's it's what's really protecting us but we have some nice technical technological changes over the past few years that have gotten better at a kind of been a supplement to yeah, the foam. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Um, they definitely help. Let's start, well, where would you like to start? you want to start with? Um, well, why don't we start with what's part? something that's like a little bit more traditional, um, okay. not necessarily the wave cell or like that, but kind of at yeah. the basic end. Um, and so, just for you guys know, they're all ANSI Snell approved. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They're just all a, just still a, America. Yeah. Still in America have have that, for the time being. That rating, right, as far <laughs> as that goes. Um, so in case anybody's wondering as far as that goes. But yeah, let's start with something basic and work our way up. Helmets, ventilation is a difference. How the protection, is it MEPS, waveform, you know, just standard issue is a difference. Uh, weight is going to be a factor, and that will also affect the price of the helmet. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, as you're saying, this is a more basic helmet, mm -hmm. but we're moving away. You'll see a lot of foam in here still, like I said earlier. Right. But now we're going to have a little supplemental technology inside here, and that's called MIPS. Okay. And what MIPS does, and hopefully our viewers can see, is there's a little cradle inside there that rotates that inside the me. helmet. I'm going to friggin' see how it moves, guys. I'm trying to zoom in that. What MIPS allows you to do is when your melon hits the ground, right? The MIPS allows the helmet to rotate a few degrees and then your head starts to start moving around. It's part of that whiplash effect that also contributes to a concussion. Yeah. So we can lessen that effect. Hopefully our concussion is less or maybe no concussion at all. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see. Because you don't want to be going, I love you, dunk. <laughs> bad. This is why we wear the helmet. <laughs> yep. Regardless. One thing we should note that once this helmet hits the ground with your head in it, it's right. done. Yeah. You throw it away. These exactly. are all one impact helmets. Right. One and done. So MIPS, fantastic technology. That's been out for a little while now, and I think we're gonna see less and less of just the foam helmet. Okay. And this is gonna be, it's like I always say, when airbags first came out. Now they're the standard. Now they're the standard. Yeah. And you're not gonna find a bag without, not a car without an airbag in it. So that's not the same a bag thing without a be. car. <laughs> oh, Sorry, <bag>. ladies. Yeah. <laughs> so this will be probably the staple okay. from now on. So we're moving away from Well, that's from good foam. though. That's and good. at a good price point. I'd like. This is, I think it's almost 65 bucks. Oh, that's not bad at all. So, not bad at all. Not bad you can all. still find the plain foam ones for about 45 bucks. Right. Few, few and far between now. Everything's gonna mostly have the MIPS system the MIPS inside it. it. All right, so now we're going to the wave cell technology. So wave cell, yes. This is a Bond Trader exclusive. Uh, it has a number of attributes okay. <laughs> to it. Let's start with that. So hopefully we can see this inside as well. Right, you can see, I'm gonna And what to... you see is that crumple zone layer inside there that does two things it acts as a crumple zone right but also the way they formed this in interior shell 
portion, it also works as a MIPS. So the way it's going to crumple is going to twist the helmet okay. once again before, the, before your head starts coming around. So the crumple zone, it's gonna twist, and then we're gonna get to the foam portion right. of the helmet that's gonna uh, absorb even more impact. Right. So a lot of great things about this helmet as far as safety is concerned and the, uh, the you know, just the overall benefits yeah. of this technology. There are some bad things about this. I can't wear this helmet. For whatever reason, wave cell hurts my head. Ah, okay. And I can't wear it. I okay. would if I could, but yeah. I can't. It's also heavier. It's also, we haven't had too much um, complaints about airflow, but I feel like our airflow is a little restricted Stifled. Yeah. with this. It shouldn't be too bad, but it is certainly a heavier helmet okay. over some of the other ones. Something to keep in mind. Right. When I look at this helmet, there's a noticeable difference. Now, now we're looking at a road helmet, uh, back to MIPS, but this thing is so light and so right. comfortable. It goes back to MIPS and I'm losing a little bit of protection, but I'll wear this yeah, all the way, day. Right. I'll wear and this all day. you know, if you look if you look at the differences and here's my road slash mountain bike helmet <laughs> slash bike packing. I know, it's huge. I got a big <laughs> fat head. Um, the back, you'll see more impact protection on yes. a mountain bike helmet than you will if you want to show on a road um, helmet. On a road helmet. And if you look at the front, the visor style is larger because you tend to be in a more upright position where in a road, you tend to be more tucked yep, down. So it's a shorter position, bow. Yep. You're gonna train your neck a little more to see that wheel that's eight inches in front of you. You're right. For sure. So that's, those are kind of the major differences. Weight is another one, ventilation is another one. Um, and then if we look at, right, the phone's ringing, but it's a business guys <laughs> and I'm not even gonna bother editing it out. <laughs> Fran is gonna send that one to voicemail, so. Um, but those are going to be your main differences between a road helmet and a mountain bike helmet itself. And then for the kids, I mean, parents used to, you know, just like not putting them in a car seat or putting a seatbelt <laughs> on them. You used to see them not wearing the helmet all yeah. the time, but now they do. And these helmets for the kids have the MIPS technology. They're great. They're fashionable. And which one's got the magnet? Oh, yeah, yeah this they one's got a little magnet. So you yeah. don't their little, their little throat skin. Yeah, a little soft meat right there and everything like that. You don't want to hurt the kiddos. Personally, I don't give a shit toughen them up. <laughs> Kids are pussy these days anyways, as far as that goes. That's just my opinion. What do I know? Mine are growing in and out of the house, so. You know, what we forgot to mention is BOA. There's what? The BOAs and all these. We can, oh, yeah, yeah, We can yeah, show yeah. you that in the kids' helmets. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, you know, before the shell, we got as close as we could out of the, oh, out of the thing yeah. and we cinched it up because the shell would mm -hmm. never really conform to our heads. Yeah. But now we have BOA and the BOA allows you okay, to click it, dial it in. comfort fit yeah. that inner portion of the, of the helmet. So Unless you have a fat head like me and then there's no adjustment needed. It just, <laughs> it just, it just goes on there. right onto it. Yeah. So, so all these helmets now have BOA. I, you will not, I don't know I if I- I can't remember the last time I've seen a helmet without, without a BOA, BOA adjuster. Yeah. Yep. So, and then the last helmet we're gonna show again, this is one of mine. Um, and I think we showed it the last time, is a full face helmet. Um, this one actually does not have the BOA system. Huh? Oh. <laughs> it's got, it's uh, right, different, uh, different size pads and everything like that. It's got a magnet as far as cinching it down, visor and everything like that. Now you guys might be thinking, Thomas, really? I'm here to tell you, this is one of the lightest full face helmets I've ever worn. And as far as ventilation, even here in Arizona and the stifling heat, okay, if you guys are natives, or ridden in Arizona in the summertime, you know what I'm talking about. It is still very ventilated. I do not have an issue riding with this helmet, um, depending on the terrain and what I'm riding in. I enjoy this layer of protection because look at this. One more impact, <laughs> it's done. I wouldn't be able to be in front of the camera I anymore. I forget, so. does that one, does the uh, face protection come no, off? No, the face off? protection okay. does not come Some off. Of I do. do not like that. They call it a convertible. So mm -hmm. if you're going uphill or something, you can, and it'll, flop on your chest and yeah I'm not about that gangster okay. lifestyle so okay but fair enough now you were talking and I just want to get back to it really quickly these are one and done and I'm talking you drop there's an impact that's it you replace it this foam has been compromised exactly and not the same again and you do not want to risk your safety your life on going ah you know I can get by with one more impact don't do that also for those who live in hotter environments like Arizona, the heat will degrade these. So don't store them in your garage, okay? Unless it's climate controlled like mine, do not store these in the garage because after a couple years that heat will actually degrade the foam and then you're gonna have to replace it. A quality helmet is not inexpensive, okay? 60 bucks, 40 to 60 bucks for an entry level, um, you know, over $200 
approaching the two hundred dollar mark. Right. Um, so two hundred and over two hundred. Right. So point. as far as that goes, so just kind of remember that, guys. Take care of them. They're gonna save you when the time comes. Hopefully, I would never wish it upon anybody. You never have to rely on your helmet to, to save your life or as far as an impact goes. But there you have it. Now, Brandon, is there anything else you uh, want to add to this? We need to clean them. Don't use any solvents to clean right. at home. Just use uh, just the rinse them out. <laughs> yeah, just rinse them out with water. But well, we never know what it's going to do. Some might yeah. be just fine. Some, but right. to, just to stay safe, just yeah. rinse them out with water. Let yep. them air dry, um, and they should be fine. I'm glad you alluded to keeping them out of extreme temperatures. Yeah, it's going to be impossible to do here. Right. Um, but the more we can keep this thing, you know, keep it out of your car when you, yeah. you know, things like that. So after you ride and you're stopping at the bar, again, mm -hmm. don't linger. Get your beer and go. <laughs> Um, Man, and then you can, linger. all these pretty much, you can remove the pads if they have pads inside and you can wash these and everything. Keep those from getting, you know, too nasty at some point. Yep. You're going to have to replace them, but. You talked about the cost. They're not inexpensive. Uh, one thing that helps kind of secure a sale sometimes, mm -hmm. to, so I can upgrade someone to a nicer, more protective helmet is most of these helmet companies now have a guarantee that if you smack this thing in the ground with your head inside it within a year, especially Von Traeger, they'll give you a brand new helmet. Ah. So that's a nice little there you go. Nice little incentive to get a nice helmet. And um, I'm sure like Tamron is to the camera company. All you got to do is go online, register the helmet, show proof of purchase. You'd have to bring purchase. it back to us. Yeah. To get that done, but that's there. So if you spend 200 bucks on a helmet, you, you'll get a brand new so one. So what Brandon's saying is that 11 months, go out to the dender, no, throw no. it down on a goddamn <laughs> rock, and then bring it back. You get a new one. I'm gonna look at it. I gotta. <laughs> I got a sharp eye for that. Dude, you don't have a sharp eye for anything. Yes, I do. Oh, well, when I put these my glasses on, I do. <laughs> all right, we digress, guys. So, all right, is there anything else pertinent that you'd like to add? I think we got it. All That's right. Good. Nice. Okay, guys, well, there you have it. At this point, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon, please. It helps out the channel, and we need all the help we can get for park passes, coffee money, and gas money, because gas is still an arm and a leg, and I think even a kidney now, too? Is oh. it, or is it stabilized a little bit? I think it might have stabilized. A little better. <laughs> so, um, there's going to be some links down below. One of them is to Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix. If you have any questions about what you've seen today, yeah, Follow that link, give these guys a call, they'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Also our social media, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, it's the devil's work, but it's necessary. And if you wanna keep up to the day-to-day -day affairs of Get Out Arizona, that's where you're gonna do it. The other links are a hodgepodge, some of them might be affiliate links if they are, and you make a qualifying purchase. When you click one, we will receive a small commission, but you will not be charged any additional money. So. It's a win for us, and I have to declare that for YouTube or else they get mad. So on that note, guys, what do we say? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards out on that trail, and we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out, Arizona. Yeah. We'll see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody. Brandon, we'll see you next week, buddy. Yeah, for sure.